Um, thank you for having me. Uh, I've never spoken with uh, the group before, so it's fantastic to meet you guys um, and happy to get to know you better. Um, Patrick, you asked about who am I and what am I bringing to the table today? So um, I'm the regional manager for Ransett Technologies. Uh, if you haven't heard about us, we are actually Canada's largest provider of IT staffing solutions and actually the world's largest staffing company. So there's a lot of power behind what we have access to. And what is really important for us is understanding what is going on in the market, what is going on in the industry from a candidate and client perspective. Obviously, COVID has changed 2020 immensely. Um, so I was invited today to come and chat with you guys. So I tried to pull a number of topics that we thought would be of interest to you guys. Um, obviously, we've left room for questions at the end and happy to answer anything that I possibly can. And We'll go ahead and get started. So today, I want to talk about um, the COVID impact on market demand. Uh, what does that look like across Canada as well as Atlantic? Uh, what are the development trends we're seeing, specific skill sets? What are salary ranges looking like? And where is this positioning us for 2021? So hopefully, these topics are of interest. This is the direction we headed for today. So first of all, COVID impact on market demand. Um, so here we're taking a look at the Canadian Labor Force Survey. Overall, the COVID impact uh, has on employment levels has been limited for IT compared to non-IT workers through the first wave. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a current depiction of what it looks like, but we can estimate it's very similar in nature because of we're all busy working right now. So we, we expect this trend to continue no matter what happens and when the second wave ends. Um, but we, we expect IT to be steady. It's basically the heart of um, industry across the, the world and technology has been a major uh, factor in it. So anyway, moving on. Um, so looking at the impact of job openings for development roles, um, comparing the Maritimes versus Canada year over year. So this is based upon information that's posted on job boards. So overall, yes, the growth of jobs have slowed down compared to last year. However, what's intriguing to see is the Maritimes has had some spikes of growth activity more than last year in July, as well as October, which are very positive signs. So even though we've seen less IT layoffs, we've also seen less expansion, which has been the impact here. Um, from an Atlantic perspective, clearly the impact of COVID has been limited, even though our numbers are going up right now, but still nowhere compared to across the country, which means we're better positioned for further growth and faster growth going forward versus some of the other regions. So here we're taking a look at the top 10 hiring companies. So comparing 2019 to 2020 for Halifax in Canada. So once again, this is taking information of what jobs are posted. So if you look at the right side on the Canada side, you can see where the growth sectors have been. No surprise, consulting, uh, gaming software, a uh, significant jump, the financial markets, telcos, um, groceries, e-commerce, obviously all the key areas were experiencing surges. Um, and then if we look to the Halifax side, it is very similar from an industry perspective. Um, a burst of uh, jump on with Beyond Trust with rem their remote access management software and Mariner Innovations have jumped on the board as well. So even though some of the regular players um, are on the board, maybe less volume than the prior year, um, but we are seeing some new entrants based upon the demands and what's going on in our industry right now due to COVID. So this slide is the top 10 roles in demand, once again, comparing 2019 to 2020 for Canada and Halifax. Overall, the roles are down. However, there are some changes in what is in demand year over year as COVID has forced organizations to go through digital transformation faster than what they were planning for. So on the Canadian side, you see project managers actually jumped from number five to number three requirement for 2020. We feel what's driving this change is clearly 
digital transformation, the UX integration, client customer experience is so much more critical than ever before. More agile adoption, which has evolved into title adoption as well. Um, and because of this activity, it is driving and increasing some of the development roles year over year. So we see an increase in full stack development, um, advantage uh, taking uh, advantage of multi skills, hybrid skills, growth in the customer facing systems is driving the increase in front end development and DevOps, increase in software engineering, senior web development, really organizations looking for more experience and more tenure. So then when we take a look at the Halifax side, similar trends as well. Um, we saw front-end developers spike for 2020 compared to 2019, um, up to number three, senior web developers have increased as well as software engineers and DevOps. So now I wanna move into development trends, um, specific skill sets and taking a look at salaries, which may be of interest. So first of all, let's take a look at cloud market share. Um, so we've been tracking um, the demand for cloud uh, since 2015. And when we look at really what does the market share look like, clearly we know there's two, three major top providers. So AWS, Azure, and Google. Um, but what's very interesting is the dynamic is this is changing and evolve, uh, evolving from year. When we look at the total increase in jobs with these skill sets, Google Cloud has had the largest proportional growth. It, their job postings are up 1,300%. Azure's up 300%, and AWS has had an increase of 232%. So growth without a doubt, but the dynamics are, are changing from year to year. So then we thought after looking at the market share, let's take a look at the supply versus salaries for cloud architects. So this graph here is giving you uh, national average salaries across Canada against the supply list. We thought it might be of interest comparing to the market share. So compared to the last slide, although Amazon's AWS has more market share, the demand for Google and Microsoft Azure skills are paid at a more premium level, which also indicates limitations in supply, which clearly, as you can see, market share has been lower on the Google side, but the supply is low, but the average salary archi or cloud architect for Google is at 145 versus Amazon is lower. So really some changes going on in our marketplace right now. And needless to say, demand versus supply has always had an impact on what the salaries are and the changes that are occurring year over year. So we wanted to take a look at top languages and frameworks that are being used, looking at Halifax versus Toronto. When we analyze the data, it's truly demonstrating that there's less of a difference between Halifax versus major markets and what languages and frameworks are being used. And organizations are starting to realize this. Um, the ones who are here obviously know that, but we're also seeing entries from other companies coming into the Atlantic marketplace and tapping into uh, the supply and the skill sets that we have. Um, when you look at some of the skill sets on the Toronto side, obviously larger markets, they're gonna use more legacy technologies, um, traditionally in the financial markets, um, as well as other organizations with a uh, very long tenure of old outdated systems. Um, but I have to say, lo looking at comparing Halifax versus Toronto, it's exciting to see this, that um, we're on par, we're working together, we're part of an ecosystem across the country. So we wanted to take a look at the top hiring companies across Canada and compare Halifax as well to the roles they hire for and the skill sets they are looking for in iterative software development. So looking at the mix of the skills that they're requested, requesting um, comparing from uh, across Canada compared to Halifax. So looking at agile DevOps, automated testing, automation from a development perspective and configuration management. So there are some distinct differences um, looking on the development side, but it's interesting to see the breakdown and what the skills they're requiring. 
um, here in Halifax compared to across the country. All right, so the next area we opted to look at is, so this is taking a look at development jobs posted with Agile and DevOps as a requirement or nice to have. Um, so what this graph is showing us is Halifax is adopting DevOps and Agile um, faster than Toronto in proportion to all development roles. So for 2020, over 50% of the requirements are requesting Agile, over 30% of the requirements are requesting DevOps as a required or nice to have. And obviously this is a trend that's been growing and we expect it to continue on this path. So we did the same thing, taking a look at development jobs posted with CICD as a requirement or nice to have. And similar in nature, Halifax and proportion to jobs is higher uh, than Toronto, requesting CI and CD um, skill sets at 18% posted. Um, and this is looking at tools such as Circle CI, Bamboo, GitLab, Travel CI, AWS Cold Build, Azure DevOps, et cetera. Um, and once again, expecting this trend to continue. So automated development, taking a look at this as well. And once again, Halifax is moving in this direction. 45% of development roles are requesting automation tools as part of the skill sets, such as Jenkins, Selenium, uh, Ansible, uh, Salt, Puppet. Um, once again, expecting the trend to continue. I hope I'm not going too fast. I know I'm having a one-way conversation right now, so hopefully uh, we're covering it. So we decided to take another look on a different spin. So development jobs that actually are identifying security as a skill set, as a required knowledge or experience. Um, so what we're seeing is over 38% of requirements mention, um, and that for 38% for um, Toronto and more around 25% for Halifax, mentioned security as a desired skill set. Security is a collective responsibility, not just left for the security teams. With speed of delivery being a key KPI for development, this often puts them at odds at times with security teams who are left in a reactive mode. By baking in security elements into the development cycle, security can be implemented without delaying delivery too much. However, this will require a shift in mindset from developers who operate on a much faster timeline than security. Prevention of issues is still much faster than issues that can arise from operational dysfunction or security breaches. Furthermore, if security configuration checks, code analysis, vulnerability scanning, our automated software delivery timelines can still be met with added security me measures. So overall, a developer who can articulate how they incorporate security mindset and processes into their build will do very well in an interview and hiring process. We thought we'd add that little tip in for this piece because we do expect this trend to continue. And of course, API development. Um, so jobs posted with API is a requirement. For Halifax, we're seeing about 17 to 18%. Um, and we are seeing this trend starting to continue um, versus the trend is a little higher in Toronto. Um, but once again, it's all proportionate to the, uh, to the development roles that we're seeing, um, but we expect this to continue as well. So, Knowing we can't just talk about skills, we got to talk about salaries, it's all part of the process. We opted to compare the trends of salaries for developers between Halifax and Toronto base. So what is fantastic to see is over the last 10 years, there's continuous growth for developer salaries. And the difference between Halifax and Toronto is now more on par than ever before. Um, and this is pulling together all tech stacks um, to really just see what are the trends as a whole. And what we're seeing as organizations moving into um, the, the Atlantic base is it's not just about um, the education, it's the skills that uh, our environment has, what our supply is providing to organizations, um, but really the power that the strength that Atlanta can provide from a development perspective. So it's exciting times for us here. 
So the grand question, what does my salary look like? So Rancid produces an annual salary guide across the country. We work with Economic Research Institute to pull this information across the country to compile data on averages. So we use the 25th to 75th percentile bands where we will see variance is in high demand or niche skill sets with limitations in supply. So other variables you need to consider is if you work for a small or mid or large organization that may have an impact on the salary where you actually sit. But these are the averages that we're seeing. So entry levels, obviously junior, mid to senior levels. Just to give you a couple of examples of um, the salary bandings we have. We do have a more extensive list. Um, our salary guide is about 300 pages and I dare say you didn't want to uh, have multiple slides on it, um, but it is available for download at our website. All right, so 2021, with all, everything that's happened with the demand, with COVID, no, nobody knows how long we're going to be in the pandemic state. We're in the middle of wave two. Will there be wave three? Don't know. But based upon where we're at today, where are we going for 2021? So that's what I want to focus on. So how will Canada recover? Recovery at the national, regional, and individual firm level is speculated to be driven by innovation, digital transformation, and control of data and intellectual property. The Canadian Council of Innovators, the federal government, national banks, and consulting firms are calling for and identifying a transition away from a service economy towards a knowledge economy based upon Canadian IP. New company creation, diversification of our national economy, while existing firms are focusing on digital transformation, change management, and e-commerce. On the talent side, we are graduating higher numbers of IT students, immigrating record numbers of IT workers, which actually account for 15% of all express entry immigrants in the tech field. So by all accounts, COVID is accelerating what was already underway. Some past trends can be identified to shine light on what is expected in the next period of recovery. In the last recession, many IT companies got their start. Square, Slack, Pinterest, Airbnb, and so on. So it can be expected that new company creation will occur once again. Canada's already seen an increase in venture capital spending, setting records in QT, Q2 of 2020, with 66% of spending going towards IT firms. Furthermore, the number of Silicon Valley, VC-backed firms that have opened up in Canada have increased exponentially year over year since 2010. And we're seeing this trend in Atlanta, Canada. There is a 27% increase in active startups in 2019 compared to 2018, four times investment in life sciences in 2019 compared to 2018. All this to say new companies are emerging predominantly in the tech space and existing firms are focusing on digital transformation. So based upon conversations Rancid has been having with CIOs across the country, we wanted to highlight some of the key trends that are being accelerated by COVID. So first of all, the market trends, innovation economy, remote and flexible work, e-commerce, maturing of the software sector. Business response is driving business agility, faster decision-making requires faster software delivery and technical enablement. The top priorities are security, cloud, mobility, automation, CRM, virtual assistants, and domain expertise. Overall, so looking forward to 2021, well, COVID has pushed organizations to move faster into digital transformation. It was part of the plan, but not necessarily for 2020, which is driving technology trends. We also are seeing a surge in contract opportunities, especially with digital skill sets where organizations are looking to bring in SMEs quickly to help them move farther, faster, and mentor their existing teams. Remote work has opened up the country for opportunities for coast to coast, as we are seeing companies reach into a lane to Canada looking for IT professionals for remote opportunities, which never existed before, which is smoothing the divide between the regions in terms of job opportunities as well as salaries. New job creation, as just mentioned, will come from existing companies focused on digital transformation. However, it's expected to see significant growth with new startup innovation hubs 
as we saw in the last recession. Overall, with an increase in IT jobs, will be supported by new graduates, immigration, and upskilling, and more effective labor market utilization. Although COVID has had a negative impact on Canada, it also is driving positive impact in IT going into the future, especially on the development side, and we only see this continuing for 2021. So that's it, guys. I have no idea if I covered what you were looking for, but happy to take questions and answer anything that I possibly can. Uh, first, thank you for going through that. I know that's all, it's hard to kind of disseminate a bunch of stats into a successive deck, but you had a story arc there and it was nice. Um, so thank you. Uh, if anybody has questions, I have a couple, but I want to hear from everyone else. I find this area very tangible to what I do, uh, but I, I would love if, uh, if people want to hit in Halifax Slack or here in the chat. Um, give people an opportunity. Let's see anything going on in chats. And um, I have to say, if we were doing this presentation in person, I'd be stopping slide by slide to interact <laughs> with you guys. So I hope you saved it up. <laughs> uh, Michelle, could you like float back to some of the earlier slides that were mm -hmm. comparing kind of Halifax to sure. Toronto? I think for me, one of the first ones that stood out was, um, yeah, not the salary stuff. Yeah, keep going. Um, the roles? Go back a little bit. Further. There was one that was like, like kind of because of COVID, there's no hiring going on. That one. Okay. So this slide does not reflect my observation, which is the hiring market is incredibly hot right now. And maybe it's just like in the last two months, I don't know. But it is, there's a lot of jobs out there. There's a lot of recruiting going on. So I, just wanted, it, I wanted to ask that or state that yeah. and say, like, am I just getting a very micro glance of a couple specific skill sets that are very hot? Or, you know, is that is that just because it's so lately it hasn't been showing up in data yet? So a couple of things, looking at this information, I mean, it is only through October. Um, with that being said, what we're not keeping track of is there's a lot of movement. There has been times where, and this is also comparing what we did last year. So overall, the volume of hiring is not where it was in 2019. Now, are we experiencing a surge? Uh, right now, I can guarantee my team, as well as across the country, all of a sudden, we the country has realized we can do this. We've got this, even though we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, so the volume of hiring has definitely been out there. Um, but so there's still pe people moving from organization to organization, um, but we aren't hearing about organizations initially hiring 50 people or 100 people in a short time frame. Um, mm -hmm. Hiring is still occurring, but it's not at the expected level they initially planned for 2020. Oh, so maybe to play that back, the difference being there's opportunistic hiring going on like crazy, but no massive scale up of company size. Exactly. So, and there's people are moving from organizations. So there's replacement hiring going on as well. Yeah. Um, but as far as pure growth over last year, so yes, the, this chart ha paints a negative picture and mm. I hated to show it, but yet at the same time is there is activity, just it hasn't surpassed where we were in 2019. But we had a huge spike in July and a huge spike in October. Um, based upon the experience I have seen and heard, it is um, over the, the, I'd say the last two months, organizations are really coming back and seeing how much can they hire for the end of the year, as well as getting ready to prepare for 2021. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Allison, Katie, uh, and uh, there's a few things going on. I'm, I'm going to go top to bottom what I see. Adam, you called out something about NSEC. Uh, salary expectations this morning and the graphs provided. I, I hope, Adam, that these graphs uh, jived with what NSCC was telling you <laughs> to expect for salary. If not, bring it back to them and say, hey, 
things have yep. changed. You you can download our salary uh, on our salary guide online. It is available, or I'm happy to send it out to you guys. Um, it does cover all industry lines across the country, coast to coast. Um, but IT is a major core of it. So. Yeah, and, and that actually segues to I think Katie and Allison. Um, uh, maybe uh, Katie, do you want to? You typed out some sure. stuff. I'm happy to read it, but maybe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I um I, I guess my couple couple questions, and then I'll go into that. With the um, I when you have the role slide regarding mm -hmm. what roles uh, there are in Hal in um, Halifax versus Toronto. I think I noticed, I was surprised that um, it's one interesting thing I noted is it seems like Toronto or Canada, maybe not just Toronto, but Canada is uptaking more of the full stack developer role. Like I see it on the board there, uh, third from the bottom on the, mm -hmm. on the right. And yep. then I see, but still Halifax seems to be very separated in terms of front end. Uh, well, yeah, front end and back end. That's uh yeah, that's, um, I, guess, I guess I assume Java develop, yeah. Or maybe it's just they're not using the word full stack. That's, um, which is a variable, right? So yeah. reality is every organization calls uh, one IT position could be different from um, one organization to another. Um, but yes, to your point, full stack, full stack is out there. <laughs> we are actively working those requests um, and it is available in the market community. It's just once again, based upon some of the surges we saw in 2020, the, this isn't exactly a full representation of what the market is and what it's doing because 2020 has not been a typical year, right? So so yes, full stack did not pop up on the Halifax side. And to your point, um, it is a bit surprising with that. Um, but based on the, so for our analytic tool that we used, it had to be publicly posted. So if it was posted and it could visibly be seen, that's where it was picked up. Is it possible that, um, like, for example, you might have one role requested or one rec for a front end developer, but the company might actually hire three or two or five, and it might be reflected here as one? Correct. So, Katie, you, you've been to my PMI presentation, so same thing. <laughs> if it's posted yeah. as one, um, from an analytics perspective, there are always challenges when you're working with data. It may, might not be 100% and reflect everything, but it would have to be individually posted as individual posts versus, you know, we're hiring for five developers and you only have one post out some of the reporting may be skewed because of that because we can't see it as that yeah yeah I, Whereas, I definitely think that would skew towards the ntts and the cgis they have a practice of one job one rec one seat one rec versus yeah i don't do that just to share like i'll put out one react whatever post and yep. not share how many seats that is for so so I, unfortunately there we don't all have a yeah. reporting system that says okay these are all roles, but I only posted this. Same yeah. thing with us. If we have the same profile and it's multi-position, we post as one. So going going to the count um, slide regarding how many roles in Halifax were, were put out there. I think we I think uh, we're quite as I and I think some others as well were quite surprised. It's the the, the volume of CGI and NTT data being in the hundreds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, I guess sometimes I think we just don't realize the scale. That's um, well, exactly. You you figure it in TT data. Um, I haven't heard recent numbers, but typically they have been the largest employer in the city. Um, and uh, you know, even to Patrick's point, they are always cycling for current projects and future projects. Um, CGI uh, does that due to the volume as well, um, based upon their international opportunities, as well as IBM. Even though IBM did not pop up as high, usually NTT and CGI are, are and Katie, you've even seen this on other presentations, so they're yeah. usually the top two. <laughs> yeah. I'd be really curious to take the slide before this one and remove NTT and CGI from it, uh, just to see if that's where the skew for PMs and BAs is coming from, because those are project-based companies with yeah. clients. Good point. Good point. Uh, as I work in one, two at a smaller scale, we tend to need PMs and BAs versus 
product companies might not be like, I'd love to see the other one just contrasting. If you remove those two big numbers from it, do you see the more tech stuff climb up the path? Uh, yeah. Very I actually, yeah, I actually think um, um, like project managers, you'll tend, it will tend to be more one rec, one role, whereas developers will be one job description hiring like, like two, two or five. Right. I, 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 yeah, I think volume wise, it's probably, there's probably more hiring of developers than there is project managers. It's just, it's hard to really get a capture on it. Yeah. Sure. The uh, Allison's comment was the lack of the salary gap between here and Toronto is mm -hmm. surprising. And then I, and then I wrote um, relating to Allison's comment. Um, have you seen a trend that, um, okay. Yes. Yeah, so it, yeah, the, exactly. So this, this is showing it and answering my question. Yeah. So you're seeing it go up your, it looks like it's, it looks like it, in 2019, we actually went up slightly higher than that. The slope is higher in Halifax, but it's still not matching. Yeah. So no, we, we are not matching for sure. Um, and I think it comes down to, we just don't have the volume of companies um, necessarily with the financial backing to, and competition is a variable here, right? Um, the more competition there is, organizations have to, to fight to keep and compensation is a variable that comes along with us. Um, but I mean, overall, where we were 10 years ago, I, I've been doing IT recruiting for 20 years and I was so thrilled to see this because there's always been the misconception of, oh yeah, it's cheaper uh, OPEX expenses in Atlanta, Canada, but it's the perception of we're going to save $15,000 by you know, um, moving a development team to Halifax. Well, that's not necessarily the case, right? Yeah. Um, and it's good because our IT professionals work just as hard as every other IT professional across the country. So it, it's definitely a good news slide. So um, right. I hypothesize that it, I would love to see the same slide actually limited down to the people the employer being in Halifax versus the employer being in Toronto. Uh, if this is based on, like, if it's not looking at where the employer is, I would say we are not competing against Toronto anymore, that there should be a third line that is North America average. Um, because I, I, I believe that's what's driving up very justly our local market salary rates, because you are not limited to be sitting in a virtual office here working for a company right. in Halifax. And COVID has changed that, right? So it, it's been a negative impact in some respects for employers, but a positive impact for the professionals of, because of COVID and remote working is you, all you have to do is look at the job ads and at least 25 to 30% of them right now are employers trying to pull our people out of the market. Um, no matter where the employer is located. So good point. And I'm taking notes because uh, the next time we, we do a presentation like this, there's little variables we didn't think about that would be helpful to yeah. run the next time. So appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I, I just think from a hirer's perspective and also from uh, someone wanting to look for a job, you're, you're, we aren't competing with the people that are sitting in the 902. We're, we're competing against, I mean, Halifax is a great example. And I know there's probably... Uh, Jeff's probably going to get the stats out to us shortly, but um, wild hypothesis is a lot of people are, are sitting in Nova Scotia, not working for Nova Scotia-based companies. Mm -hmm. Times are changing, that's for sure. COVID just accelerated and made it more public, the trend that has been going on for a while. Yep, for sure. I've yacked a bit. Katie's yacked a bit. Anybody else? Terry. <laughs> yeah, Terry. Stop working from Halifax. I'm working for a remote company. Oh, wait. No, you pay taxes here. Keep doing it. <laughs> so as I said, I, I hope this was content you guys were looking for. Um, always happy to answer any questions offline. I provided my contact information. Um, you know, it's, it's always a great way for us to connect and see how we can help, whether it's information perspective or guidance and what you're looking for. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. I find this stuff very interesting and very pertinent to just, I'm, I'm super glad. I think it's 
Allison and Adam that are reflecting that they're in S- NSAC right now and are, I, I'll wild assumption, going to graduate shortly with massive amount of skill and talent. Uh, I think it's so impactful for people to see these numbers. And I remember going through school about 800 years ago and we didn't have any of this information. You just, nope. you didn't know what it was. So I think it's important for yeah. people to realize what their, what their market value is. Absolutely. Well, I can say I opened the Rancid Branch 16 years ago, and it's something that we do every year. Um, so it is available. So we always try to push it out end of the year prior, um, which is why I have access to the data now. And January 1st, we'll have it downloadable. But send me an email if you want the salary guide, and I'd be happy to give you a link to the current version for 2021.